We'd like to welcome you again, both friends who are with us in person and with our friends who are joining us online. It is good to be here. Happy Memorial Day weekend as we honor and celebrate the men and women of our forces, armed forces who laid down their life for this country and the freedoms that we have. And today we are honored to celebrate the life of our sister in Christ, Miss Sue Odom. In today's message, what I want to do is I want to weave together two things, two streams, if you will. One is, how does the resurrection change our power in life? How does the resurrection change our power? Because the resurrection does change the power that we have. But I also want to weave together a celebration and thanksgiving for the life of one of God's children, Miss Sue Odom. And so let's begin in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this life, especially a life that has lived well. We thank you for the sacrifices made by people so that we can enjoy the freedoms that we have. And so let us never take those freedoms for granted, especially the freedom we have in Christ. We thank you, Lord, for the life of your servant. And may today we honor your faithfulness in her life as her Lord and her Savior. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Let me set the stage for just a moment of where we begin. Today, we come together um, to celebrate partly the ascension of our Lord. And so this morning, I would love for you to do me a favor and turn in your Bibles to the book of Acts chapter 1. Um, you can use one of the pew Bibles if you'd like. You can also pull out this little handout that came with your worship guide today. And let's go to Acts chapter 1 for just a moment. And we're going to spend some time with the Lord here. And uh, as you do that, um, I, I remember, I want to share a memory for just a moment, okay? And that memory um, always left an impression that Miss Sue imparted upon me. We were talking one day, and it was either at Al's or it was either at her home. I can't remember the exact location. And she commented in passing um, where she was at in her annual Bible reading. And she mentioned to me that every year she tried to read through the Bible, which I thought was quite impressive. I was, I was very impressed. And I asked her, I said, Miss Sue, how many times have you read through the Bible? And she goes, I lost count. <laughs> and that was the moment for this young pastor that I went, oh, I better do my homework. <laughs> because this lady is going to be teaching me. And I never forgot that. I never forgot that. It was in that moment I realized, I better do my prep work before I was next week. Let's go to Acts chapter 1, beginning at verse 1. In the first book, it says, O Theophilus, I have dealt with all that Jesus began to do and teach until the day that he was taken up. And after he had given commands to the Holy Spirit, to the apostles whom he had chosen. These were the chosen apostles of Christ. And in verse 3 it says, He presented himself alive to them after suffering by many proofs, appearing to them during 40 days, and speaking about the kingdom of God. The author of the book of Acts is a man by the name of Luke. And Luke is a disciple of Jesus. He's a doctor. He's an historian by trade. He's been sponsored by a gentleman by the name of Theophilus to write two books. The first book that he wrote dealt with the life of Jesus. Everything that Jesus said and everything that Jesus did, he recorded. And this book concluded with Jesus being taken up into heaven, what we call the ascension of Jesus. But first, he had to give the apostles some very specific commands through the work of the Holy Spirit. The first book showed how Jesus presented himself alive and well for 40 days after suffering an agonizing death on the cross. The second book was to record the history and message of the early church. And this history focuses attention around two figures, Peter and Paul, both apostles of Jesus. The second book, which we're going to pick up with, is called Acts. And it picks up right where the first book ends. It actually overlaps a little bit. So let's pick up the story at verse 4. And while staying with them, he ordered them, listen, gentlemen, do not depart from Jerusalem, Jesus said, 
But you wait for the promise of the Father, which he heard from me when he said this. For John baptized with water, but you are going to be baptized with the Holy Spirit. And not many days from now. Jesus gave his disciples some very specific instructions. He said, don't depart from Jerusalem. Don't you leave this city. You wait for the promise that the Father has given to you. You wait for the promise of the Holy Spirit. Wait for the day that you will be baptized. That you'll be washed over with the Holy Spirit. That day is what we know as Pentecost. The Spirit of God comes upon the apostles and the flames of fire arose on their head. It's a day that we will celebrate next Sunday. In fact, one of the pictures that I found of Miss Sue, it's either, I can't really figure it out, it's either from a Pentecost Sunday celebration or it's from what we call Reformation celebrations because it's the two days that we um, present the red and we put out the red banners and the red pyramids and we ask everybody to wear red, right? And there's Miss Sue, and if you can kind of notice, she's the one. <laughs> I haven't quite figured out why she didn't wear red that day, but she wore blue that day, okay? But that's her pew. And let me tell you, she'll let you know that's her pew too, right? <laughs> if, 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 if any, now, she wouldn't do this to a guest, but if it was a church member she had known a long time who was sitting, it's about right over here. If, 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 if there was a church member sitting there, she would kind of just gently, politely walk up to them and go, you're in my pew. <laughs> you're in my seat. You need to scoot over. Because she had her spot right there. And I remember her, many Sundays her sitting right there uh, and, and, and joining us in. Um, and, uh, and for the past couple years, she hasn't been able to. Um, but every time I go see her, she said, oh, I'm, I'm, I watch online. Uh, it's not the same. But I'm glad to be able to. But that was her seat. That was her pew there. For some reason, though, I don't actually know why she didn't wear red that day. But she loved the big celebration. She loved the big days in the life of the church. And she would be right there in her spot. Let's continue with Acts, verse, Acts, 1, chapter, Acts chapter 1, verse 6. Let's look at it together. So when they come together, they asked him, Lord, right? He said, will you at this time restore the kingdom of Israel? Over and over and over again, right? Over and over ago, Jesus spoke about the kingdom of God. And this was exciting to the apostles and all who lived in Israel. And they desired for Israel to have a new king and no longer live under Roman uh, rule and oppression. And so Jesus responds to them in verse 7. This is what he says. He says to them, It's not for you to know the times or seasons that the Father has fixed by his own authority but you will receive power. You will receive power, he says. And when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. In this moment, Jesus reminds his disciples of two very important things. The first thing he reminds them of, it's actually the last thing, is he says, never lose sight of why you're here. Never lose sight of the mission. And the mission is to be a witness. And he says, I want you to be a witness first in Jerusalem. And then I want you to spread out to Judea. And then I want you to go to Samaria. And then I want you to go to the ends of the earth. And I love that, right? I actually have an image of this that I want to show you. It's of these circles, right? You start at home, right? And then you keep working your way outwards. Miss Sue was a longtime member of what was known as the LWML, the Lutheran Women's Missionary League. And the Lutheran Women's Missionary League often embraced this model of doing things that are both at home in Jerusalem, finding the Judeas and the Samarias that were on the outer rim, and then going to the ends of the earth. And many of the photos that I saw of her were at LWML events with local Lutheran congregations. And so it was a joy to watch. That's the first thing Jesus says. He says, stay focused on the mission of why we are here, of which Miss Sue was a part of. And this is because only God knows when and why. Only God knows the times 
and the seasons. So many things happen in our lives that only God knows when and why. Amen? There's so many things that happen in our lives that only God knows when and only God knows why. We've seen that over and over. Only God knows when and only God knows why when tragedy strikes. Only God knows when and only God knows why when destruction happens. Only God knows when and only God knows why when you have the death of a loved one. But it's in the wandering that God makes a promise to his apostles and really to all of us, including Miss Sue. And here's the promise. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. That statement by Jesus is one of the most significant changes that occurs because of our lives that are built around the resurrection of Christ. You'll receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And so it begs three questions. Three simple questions. One, what is this power? Why do we need this power? And how do we obtain this power? Why? What is it? Why do we need it? And how do we get it into our lives? So let's look at the first question. What is this power? How many of you have ever seen a stick of dynamite before? Just raise your hand or give me a thumbs up. If you're, in, if you're online, just give me a thumbs up in the chat stream. How many of you have ever seen a stick of dynamite before, right? Or an explosive like that. The word power here is, is an incredible word. It's the word didymus in the Greek. And when I think of a stick of dynamite, I can't help but think about Wile E. Coyote. I grew up watching Wile E. Coyote, right? And Wile E. Coyote always had dynamite from the Acme Company, right? I can't believe how much dynamite they sell, right? Okay. And Wile E. Coyote was always trying to blow up the Roadrunner. But eventually, <laughs> always, <laughs> he ended up blowing up himself, right? That was my earliest memories of dynamite, right? Dynamite is a powerful explosive. And the word dynamite comes from the Greek word dynamis, which we find in this verse, in Acts chapter 1, verse 8. But we also find it in Romans 1, verse 16, one of Martin Luther's favorite verses, when it says this, For I am not ashamed of the gospel. Why? Because it's the power of God. It's the dynamis of God. It's the dynamite of God for salvation to everyone who believes in Christ as Lord and Savior. First to the Jew, and then also to the Greek or the Gentile. Me and you, and yes, Miss Sue. Paul says it's the power of God. It's the power of God that gives us this. What is this, Denimus? It is the divine strength to carry out our divine calling. It is the divine strength that God gives me and you and all who are in Christ to live out our divine calling here on the earth. When disciples are baptized into the Holy Spirit on Pentecost, they were given the power, these apostles were given the power, unlike anything they had ever experienced in their life, to be a witness in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and the ends of the earth. A power that will give them divine strength to carry out their divine calling. Now, now that we know what this power is, we could turn our thoughts to the next question. Why do I need it? If you really want to connect the dots today, why do you and I need this same divine power that exists in this world? Have you ever thought about how everything in the world needs power? I mean, think about this. In order to function properly, everything needs power. I mean, think about the cars you drove here today, or, or, or cars, or trucks, or motorcycles, right? Think about this. A car without fuel is just an expensive, shiny toy, right? If it doesn't have fuel, it goes nowhere. Think about your stove. If you use the stove this morning, this morning to cook something, or you'll cook something today, right? A stove without electricity or gas is just a box in your kitchen to hold stuff. Think about your body. Your body without food is just a lump on a couch. 
everything needs power, including a Christian. And so when I think about Miss Sue, the number 94 just jumps out. It's amazing. 94 years on this earth. 94 years to live. 94 years to see, experience. 94 years to eat and enjoy family and friends and church and life. 94 years to see the rise and advances in this world. From automobiles to planes to television to movie theaters to the internet. Can you imagine all the changes you see in 94 years? In 94 years, Ms. Sue experienced and watched 16 presidents from the likes of Hoover and Roosevelt, Truman and Eisenhower, Kennedy and Nixon, Carter and Reagan, Bush and Clinton, and so on. Can you imagine the experiences? In 94 years, Miss Sue experienced and watched the rise and fall of the Berlin Wall, the civil rights movement, the first person to land on the moon, and so many other experiences that are too many to number. Miss Sue experienced and watched World War II, the Korean War, the Vietnam War, the Cold War, Desert Storm, 9-11, War on Terror, and so much more. 94 years to see and experience and live all that is good and all that is evil in this world. And when you live to be 94, like Miss Sue, you look back and you realize something. There is no way that you can faithfully follow Jesus without somebody giving you a divine strength and power. See, Jesus made his disciples a promise. He said, I'm not going to leave you alone. We'll talk more about that next Sunday. My Father is going to send with me, send another, a helper, a comforter, an encourager, an empowerer. One who will give you the courage and the strength and the power to live out your divine calling on this earth. See, Jesus has placed a calling on all of our lives, including Miss Sue, that she lived out for 94 years. In Matthew 5, Jesus said, I want you to be salt and light in this earth. In Matthew 28, he said, I want you to go into this world and make disciples of all nations, baptizing and teaching them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, everything that I have commanded and everything I have taught you. In Acts 1.9, we see today that Jesus, give, 1, 8, Jesus gives his promise. He says, I want you to be my witnesses in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. In 2 Corinthians 5, he says, I want you to be my ambassadors. I want you to be ambassadors for Jesus. Ambassadors of reconciliation to all people so that God can use you to make his appeal through you. And I think in 94 years, I wonder how many people God used, how many people did Miss Sue serve as an ambassador of reconciliation to so that God may make his appeal through her be reconciled with Jesus. For he who knew no sin became sin for us that we might have the righteousness of God. I think about 1 Peter 2 where Jesus says, I want you to be my chosen people, my holy race, a nation belonging to me, so that you may declare the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into this wonderful light. And I have to wonder about how many years Ms. Sue spent in a place just like this, declaring week after week, the praises of him who called her and called me and called you out of darkness into this wonderful life. And if that's not enough, Jesus said, I want you to love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength and love your neighbor as yourself. And the question is, do you think you could ever do any of that on your own? And the answer is no. 
Do you think you can rely on your own strength and motivation, courage and willpower to accomplish any of that? And the answer is no. If Miss Sue was here today, she would tell each of us, because I've heard her utter these words before, you can't do anything without Jesus in your life. We can't even begin to scratch the surface of our calling in this life without the supernatural power of God working in and through us. And if you even tried, here's what will happen to you. You will burn out because there's not enough of you. You will give up because it's too hard for you. Or you'll be so filled with pride because you think you're doing it on your own. If there's one thing that I learned from Miss Sue, is that you have to learn to rely and trust fully on the Lord. She used to tell me every time I visited her, whether it was at her house or at Covenant Place, this. She would always, at some point in the conversation, utter these words. I don't understand how anyone makes it in this life without the Lord. I don't understand how anyone in this life makes it without the Lord. If there's anything that you get today from the Holy Spirit and this inspired witness of a 94-year-old follower of Christ is this. I don't understand how anyone makes it without the Lord. Which brings us to this last question. How? How do you get this power in your life if you don't have it? I want to show you something today. You may be wondering why I have a blanket up here. This blanket was actually made by Miss Sue. Miss Sue made this blanket for our youth group. And we were doing a raffle. And I don't exactly remember all the circumstances, but eventually this, wrap, this, this blanket, Miss Sue gave to my wife, Becky. And she said she wanted her to have it. And she gave it to her long before we ever knew that Clara was going to be born. But my wife shared with Miss Sue, she said, she said, if we ever have a daughter, these are the exact colors that I would love for her to have. See, Miss Sue made a gift and gave it to my wife before we ever knew that we would have a daughter who would sleep with it every night. It was the perfect gift. The promise of God is the exact same way. It's the perfect gift given to us before we even need it. The apostles received this gift on the day of Pentecost. Paul says you and I receive this gift when we believe in the gospel. This gift is given to us as the gospel takes hold of our lives in the waters of baptism. The same waters that grabbed a hold of Miss Sue as a young girl up in war here, Alabama. Many of you have received that same gift right here at this baptismal font. And this gift continues to take hold of our lives and increase our strength as we learn to fully trust God and completely believe in the gospel of Jesus. That even though we are sinners, Christ died for us. That in our baptism, we are united with Christ in death, so that in, with him, we may be united with him in his resurrection. And so for Miss Sue, the best is yet to come on the day of resurrection. The power of God for all who believe. When you believe in your Christ, when you believe in Christ as your Lord and Savior, as Miss Sue believed in Christ as her Lord and Savior, when you're united with him in his death and resurrection, you are given the Holy Spirit, the source of your power, the source of life, a source that gave Miss Sue a faith and confidence in Jesus for 94 years. And we celebrate it, we give thanks for the faithfulness goodness, the love of God in Christ Jesus for sinners like me and you and Miss Sue. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And we all said together, church, amen. amen. amen.